Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Tables can have many purposes in Word. You can use tables to manipulate data in the same way that a spreadsheet program would. You can use them to store data, or you can use them to assist you in structuring the layout of the document. While many people think of cells within a table as only recording text and numbers, you can place any content that you want into the cells. You can edit individual cell information or delete entire columns and rows of information if necessary. However, before we look at manipulating the data within a table, we need to look at how to create a table in Word. In this lesson, you will begin by examining how to create a basic structured table layout. These types of tables, which resemble grids, have a definite structure, and they're often used for data storage. After we have looked at creating structured tables, we will look at how we can create tables that have an irregular layout of cells. These types of tables are often used for assisting in document layout. For example, if you wanted to create a coupon cutout for people to use, you could place the coupon information into a table just to enhance the appearance of the final printed document. So to create a basic structured table, click the Insert tab in the ribbon. Next, look for the Table button in the Tables group. This button allows you to easily create a table. Click the Table button to show a grid along with several commands in a drop-down menu. If you want to create a simple structured table, then roll your mouse pointer out and over the grid by the number of columns and rows that you want to insert into the table. The dimensions of the table will be shown above the grid as the number of columns by the number of rows when you roll your mouse pointer over the grid. Just click your mouse when you have the desired number of columns and rows highlighted in order to insert a table of the displayed dimensions into your document. Now after creating the table, you will probably want to perform some data entry. Moving into cells to enter information is easy. Just click with your mouse into the cells into which you want to enter information, or press the tab key on your keyboard to move from cell to cell, left to right, and top to bottom. Now just keep in mind that if you press the tab button when you are in the last cell in a table, meaning the lower right corner, then Word will insert a new row for you to continue your data entry within. Note also if you want to move from right to left, you can hold down shift on your keyboard and then press the tab key to move in the opposite direction. Now cells can also contain many lines of text if needed. Entering text into a cell works in the same manner as it does when entering text into a document. When the text reaches the cell's border, it automatically wraps itself. You only need to press the Enter key on your keyboard if you want to create a new paragraph within a cell. Now another way to create a structured table 
is to click the Table button in the Tables group on the Insert tab of the ribbon, and then choose the Insert Table command. This will open the Insert Table dialog box. In this dialog box, you enter the number of columns and the number of rows that you want the table to possess into the two boxes provided in the Table Size section. In the Auto Fit Behavior section, you can set how Word determines what size to make the columns in the table. You can select Fixed Column Width if you want the columns to be a set size, and you can then use the spinner to set the width yourself. You can also select Auto Fit to Contents to let Word adjust the width of the columns based on the content that you place into them. You can also select the Auto Fit to Window to let Word adjust the columns to fit the window width. You can then click the OK button to insert a table of the specified dimensions into your document. Now we'll look at how to create a table by individually drawing cells by hand. While it is possible to use this method to create an organized structured table, it's more often used to create a layout for your documents. It's also used to make minor adjustments to a structured table. Now to use this method, click the Table button that appears in the Tables group on the Insert tab of the ribbon. This time, select the Draw Table command from the drop-down menu. When you select this command, your mouse pointer turns into a pencil icon when you hold it over the document area. At that point, just click and drag to draw the table cells that you want. You can also click and drag from one side of a cell to another in order to split the cells that you draw into additional columns and rows. Note that this feature remains enabled after you finish drawing the table cells. To turn this feature off, you can either click the Draw Table button in the new Draw Borders group on the Design tab of the Table Tools contextual tab in the ribbon that appears when you begin to draw a table, or you can simply press the Escape key on your keyboard. Notice that when you select the Draw Table command, you'll see a new contextual tab appear in the ribbon the Table Tools Contextual tab. This tab contains two other tabs, the Design tab and the Layout tab. On the Design tab, the Draw Table button is placed at the right end in the Draw Borders group. Now note the three drop-down buttons to the left of the Draw Table button. These allow you to change the line style line thickness, and line color of the lines that you draw using the Draw Table button. You can use the Line Style drop-down to select a different line style to apply. Likewise, you can use the Line Weight drop-down to select a thickness of the line to draw. You can then use the Pen Color drop-down to select the color that you want. Then you can use the Draw Table button to draw lines. Note that you can also click and drag over the lines you've already drawn in order to redraw lines using the new formatting. Now when you're learning to draw table cells, you'll inevitably make a few errant lines. You can erase mistakes by using the Eraser button that appears in the Draw Borders group of the Design tab on the Table Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon. When you click this button, your mouse pointer will appear as an eraser when you hold it over the page. Place it over the line that you want to remove, and then click and drag the mouse over the line that you want to erase. It can be a bit tricky at first. The line that you delete will appear to turn a color before you release the mouse button. Also, this button, like the Draw Table button, will remain enabled until you turn it off. 
You can do this by clicking the eraser button in the draw borders group of the design tab of the table tools contextual tab or by simply pressing the escape key on your keyboard. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.